Except for a few instances in the past, the NBA seasons follow a predetermined format that has suffered little to no changes over recent decades. However, the coronavirus pandemic forced the league into making some changes while also allowing it to try out new ideas. We were able to see some of those ideas come to life during last season. Some of those experiments, such as the All-Star Game format and the implementation of a play-in tournament, added some excitement and unpredictability to what was otherwise a complicated season. However, that was only the tip of the iceberg. Since the effects of the pandemic are still raging in the United States, the league has announced a series of changes that will make the 2020-21 season an unprecedented one. Welcome to Courtside. Today, we're taking a look at the most relevant changes that will take place once the upcoming season gets going. If you ask people related to pro sports, most would tell you that last season's conclusion was a huge success. After all, the Orlando bubble produced some of the most exciting playoff series in recent years, the league managed to crown a new champion, and there were no cases of coronavirus inside Disney World's facilities. However, the bubble also left many questions on the table, and the NBA suffered some serious consequences because of the pandemic. The lack of fans on the stands and the canceled games produced a significant loss in revenue, and the fact the finals were played in October left many doubts about when the next season would start. At first, most people expected it to start between January and March 2021, and even Adam Silver talked about how he believed the league would not resume play until that year. But soon it became evident that would not be a smart financial decision. TV partners started to push for an earlier start date that would allow them to broadcast the Christmas games, as well as the ring induction ceremony before that. So in a matter of weeks, the league office had to change its plans to seek a start date by mid-December. That change in direction didn't immediately sit well with the players' union, who were looking to have an offseason that resembled that of a regular year. However, before long, the players also bought into the league's plan, and so both parts started to work around December 22nd as the new season start date. Along with that, it was agreed the season would consist of a 72-game schedule, and while players were reluctant at first to accept that, the decision was ultimately taken with money in mind. While a shorter regular season may disappoint some, that will allow the league to eventually recover its normal schedule by having an offseason that goes from August to October, while also helping it avoid competition with the Tokyo Olympics and TV ratings. The new schedule will have teams play three games against other teams in the same conference while also playing two games against teams in the opposite conference. But aside from a reduced schedule, the league will also implement a few decisions based on the prospect that it could lose a lot of money along the way. Among them, one that will potentially change the way players are paid is the amount of the league holds in escrow. During most seasons, the NBA holds about 10% of players' salaries to compensate for any potential losses in basketball-related income. However, since it's expected there will be significant losses in the coming season, that amount will go up. At first, it was believed up to 40% of players' salaries could be held in escrow, but instead that amount will be staggered in the coming years and the league will keep well, around 20% of the players' money. But the exact number will end up being determined by how much money the league makes in the coming years, and that will be related to whether fans will be allowed inside arenas or not. And even though things are not looking good in that regard at the moment, teams are expecting to be able to receive fans at some point in the season. In fact, the NBA has already sent a memo to all 30 organizations detailing the conditions that will need to take place for them to allow fans inside games. Of course, that will go hand-to-hand -hand with local regulations with how much of an impact the coronavirus has in each state, but still there's hope some teams will do their best to have fans back in the stands. Warriors owner Joe Lacob has already talked about his willingness to invest part of his money to allow fans in up to 50% of capacity. Along with those statements, he mentioned how it would be impossible for the league to remain sustainable without fans going to games. So whether or not he's successful in finding a safe way to receive the public remains to be seen, but we can assume other teams will follow suit if he achieves his goal, and that should be an encouraging sign to fans. But aside from that, let's take a look at the things that will be missed and added in the upcoming season. One of the few things that will be removed is the All-Star Game. While there will still be an all-star break that allows the players to have an extended rest while also allowing the league to manage its schedule, there won't be any events related to the all-star weekend. That will take away some of the most interesting events that take place at the middle point of the season. However, it's reasonable the league wants to condense the all-star break as much as possible. And the fact that fans won't be able to attend any of the events also disincentivizes their development during what could end up being one of the strangest seasons in league history. But that should be the only thing missing from the regular season. And instead, we will see some interesting additions that could make the last few weeks of the schedule more exciting than they usually are. One such experiment will be the inclusion of the play-in tournament that made its debut inside the bubble. However, this time it will come with a few different twists. While the tournament allowed teams within a certain amount of games from the last playoff seed in each conference to compete for a chance to earn a postseason spot, the 2021 version will be expanded. This time, teams seeded 7-10 through 10 will be able to play in the tournament regardless of how many games they won during the regular season. The 7th and 8th seeds will play each other once, and the winner will be awarded the 7th seed once the playoffs get going. The 9th and 10th seed will also play each other, and the winner will get the opportunity to play the loser of the other series. Finally, the winner of the last matchup will be awarded the 8th seed. In other words, 
both the 7th and 8th seeds will have two chances to secure their respective playoff spots. On the other hand, both the 9th and 10th seeds will have an opportunity to reach the playoffs regardless of their record. That could very well make the days previous to the start of the playoffs a fierce competition as teams with the lower seeds will make everything possible to participate in the tournament. However, it could be argued the fact that teams will be allowed to participate in the play and regardless of how many games they're behind the 8th seed, well, that could be a step back in the tournament's concept as it could stop lower teams from trying to win as many games as possible while also minimizing the effort of two organizations that were able to perform well during the regular season. The good news is that format will only be implemented during the upcoming season. If it succeeds, it'll probably remain unchanged during the coming years. Another interesting announcement is the one that describes the schedule will be released in two parts. The first half will be released around the same time training camp starts, and the second half will be released when the first one is close to its conclusion. That makes something clear. The league knows that without a bubble, there may be COVID outbreaks as the season goes on. If that's the case, a few games will need to be rescheduled. However, even if a considerable amount of games are canceled because of an outbreak, the NBA won't try to reschedule all of them if it's not reasonable to do it. So there's a chance not all teams will play 72 games, and that could mean winning percentage will be the measure used to determine which squads qualify for the playoffs, just like it happened inside the bubble. All right, last but not least, there's the fact that a city will make a debut as an NBA market after it was confirmed Tampa would become the temporary home of the Toronto Raptors. While the pandemic hasn't been as terrible in Canada as it's been in the U.S., the federal government has established traveling prohibitions between both countries that have forced teams like the Blue Jays to play a whole season outside of its natural home. At first, other places like Kansas City, Nashville, and New Jersey were among the contenders to become the team's home away from home. But as it turns out, Tampa's offer was more appealing to the Raptors. And while ownership in the front office did everything within their power to try to play their home games inside Scotiabank Arena, in the end, they couldn't reach an agreement with federal health authorities. So... For at least a few months, the Raptors will host games south of the border. And while We the South was trending on Twitter because of that, the team has made it clear that it intends to return to Toronto as soon as possible, something that could happen by the middle point of the season. Still, Tampa will be able to boost local sports by receiving the Raptors while also showing why it could be a good NBA market in the future. And while that doesn't mean the city will get its franchise, it's certainly an opportunity other cities would have loved to have. Altogether, the 2020-21 season will bring a multitude of changes to adapt to the unique conditions the world is currently living in. While some of those changes come out of necessity, others could be here to stay if they work out well. And while we can't tell whether the league will be able to do as well as it did with the bubble, there's reason to believe it should at least be able to put together a quality product that will eventually be able to bounce back on the financial aspect. But now, what things surprise you the most about the upcoming season? What else would you like to change about the regular season? Let us know in the comment section. We hope you've enjoyed today's video, and if you did, remember to like it and subscribe to our channel for more NBA content. We are Courtside.